so good morning to everyone. In this very first video, we are going to see about the poetic devices used in poems. Uh, here, uh, when you read a poem, uh, we should know what are the poetic devices used in that. We call poetic devices as figure of speech. Uh, they are Here the poetic devices are literary devices used in poems in order to give a good impression to the poem or to decorate the poem. First, let us see our, the, poetic, the poetic devices one by one. The first one is simile. What do you mean by simile? Simile means it is a comparison, a comparing two objects or two, uh, it is comparing two different objects um, which have similar characteristics, which have similar characteristics. That is called as simile. That means uh, it is a comparison made between two, uh, made between two objects uh, using a soft light. That is called as simile. Here, uh, simply means it is a comparison made between two different objects, two different objects which have some resemblance or similarities. For example, uh, for example, uh, uh, we, can, we can say this simply in a, can define this simply in another another form. It is a comparison made using a saw light. That is called as simply. Uh, let us see the example. Um, she fought like a lion in the battlefield. She fought like a lion in the battlefield. Then in order to show that she is very courageous and she fought very she in order to show that she fought very courageously, it is said that she fought like a lion in the battlefield. The comparison made using a soft light. Comparison made using a soft light. That is called as simile. Example is she fought like a lion in the battlefield. First one. Second one. That uh, I will draw another example. Here I told you 
it is a comparison between us yes, or like first example we saw is blank second one the water is as tasty as honey here the comparison we have seen as so it is simply please note that uh, please note on it um, after that we will go to the next one here we saw uh, simply means it is a comparison we have seen as a like but uh, when we come to the next one that is called as metaphor I mean the metaphor it is a comparison made without a saw like that is called as metaphor Here, when you come to metaphor, second figure of the year, we have mentioned the second figure of speech as metaphor. It is a comparison made without a saw like. That is known as metaphor. We can uh, define it in another way. Uh, it is a hidden comparison between two things but which share some common characteristics. For example, we have, we, I will give you a common example uh, that is easy for you to understand. Usually you may be made studied in lower classes. Camel is the ship of the desert. Look at the example as well as the definition. The camel is a ship of the desert. Here, when you come to the definition, it is a hidden comparison. It is a hidden comparison between two things, but which share some common characteristics. It is a hidden comparison made between two things which share which share some common characteristics. Here, the camel is a ship of the desert. Here, why the camel is called the ship of the desert? I, uh, here the camel is used for transportation in the desert. At the same time, um, where the ship is used for transportation? The uh, ship is used uh, only uh, to sail in the sea, not in the desert. At the same time, here the camel is um, compared to a ship. Camel is a ship of the 
as well. The cab is only animal that can uh, that can be used for transporting uh, things of uh, 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 things of people from one place to another. From one place to another. So it is called as so cab is called as a ship of the desert. The camel is a ship of the desert. I think you might understand um, the difference between simile and uh, simile and metaphor. What do you mean by simile? Simile means it is a comparison made using a soft light. But here it is a comparison when it comes to metaphor. It is a comparison made using uh, made, made without using a soft light. That is the only difference. Simply means it is a comparison made using a soft light. Metaphor means it is a comparison made without using a soft light. That is called as metaphor. And we come to the next one. Come to the third Personification means giving human qualities to non-living things. In short, in short, way, in short, we can say this: giving human qualities to non-living things. In other form, we can say this: um, giving human qualities to abstract objects. Abstract objects are non-living things or abstract ideas. Here, giving non formal understanding this is better. Giving human qualities to non-living things. Usually, when when the poet uh, writes, when a poet writes a poem, uh, when he when he when he writes about the moon, he personifies the moon as a living thing, and uh, he personifies the moon as a living thing, and he and he imagines something that is in his life, and he speaks about that. That is called as personification. And we are example about that. Look at, look at the two examples. First one, first one, death race is icy hands on kings. Here, death is a, uh, death is a, death is an abstract idea. It is a non-living thing. It is an abstract idea. Death race is icy hands on kings. Is it possible to lay? Uh, uh, is it possible to lay? Is a, uh, is hands on kings. Here, the death is a lifeless. At uh, the same time, here the poet uses death lays his icy hands on kings. Here it is personified as it is life and it is um, and it is uh, said about the death lays his icy hands on kings. Here come to next one. How sweet the moon light sleeps on the on this bank. How sweet the moon light sleeps on this bank. Here the 
uh, here the moonlight here the moon is personified as a living thing and it is uh, and, and some imagination is going on in the mind of the poet and he writes this line how sweet the moonlight sleeps on this bank so this is called as personification we are seen um, we have seen three figures each first one is simply second one is metaphor third one is personification simply means it is a comparison made using a solar light but in metaphor it is a comparison made without using a solar light that is called as metaphor when it comes to personification it is a it is a giving a, a giving human qualities to non living things that is called as personification example death lays his eyes in hands on me um, next example how sweet the moon light sleeps on this bank The third one is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia means imitation of onomatopoeia means it is an imitation of natural sounds. Imitation of natural sounds is called as onomatopoeia. For, for example, when you drop a coin, it makes a sound. When you imitate that sound, it is called as onomatopoeia. First, just uh, when you strike the guitar or piano, it gives a tingling sound. That is called as onomatopoeia. The tingling piano, for example. Tingling piano. This also the, the sound is imitated. The, so the piano sound is imitated as tingling piano. Next example is the hissing snake. Hissing. The sound. Uh, the, the sound of the snake is. Uh, uh, Sound the snake makes is hissing sound. So it is called as a hissing snake. Next one. The thunder rumbles. This is called as onomatopoeia. The thunder rumbles. Rumbles. The thunder rumbles. The sound of the thunder is mentioned here as rumbles. Here, tinkling piano. When a piano is played, it makes a tingling sound. So it is tingling piano. Sound is imitated here. Here, the hissing sound of the snake is imitated here. Here, the sound of the thunder is imitated here. That is called as onomatopoeia. For your better understanding, it is, uh, it is easy, easy to define. It is an imitation of natural sounds.
hyperbole. Hyperbole it is a figure of speech. It is a figure of speech you see exaggeration or overstatement. Overstatement means in order to express a sentence, in order to express something, uh, we uh, we give uh, stress to the particular sentence. Uh, sentence that is called as hyperbole. For example, the play Macbeth. And the play Macbeth, a lady Macbeth, uh, the help of the man, the help of her husband Macbeth, kills the king Dargan. At uh, the same time, she was uh, she was in guilty conscience. At the same time, she washes her hands repeatedly. And uh, finally, in in this play Macbeth, uh, Shakespeare uses the lie, uh, uses the lie, uses the statement. Even if she washes, uh, she washes the uh, the fragments that is available in uh, Arabia, and that is not enough to uh, get out of the guilty conscience. Uh, uh, to get out, get, to get out of the guilty conscience, that is called as hyperbole. I'll give the example. In another statement, we can call it as Making more important or more noticeable than usual or okay. what is uh, what is the word in usual? Um, add something to give uh, more importance to the statement. That is called as hyperbole. Here, this statement is made by Shakespeare uh, while describing about Lady Macbeth. Um, she, she was guilty of uh, murdering King Duncan. So uh, she washes her hand repeatedly with the perfumes, uh, the perfumes and other things. At the same time, uh, he, he explains that in order to give more importance to the sentence, he explains that here's the smell of blood. Still, all perfumes of Arabia will not suit in this little hand. She is still, uh, that means, uh, she is still guilty, uh, guilty of murdering King Dagnath. I will call another example. It is, uh, it is the uh, next book. Here, we are greater than the people and the kings. Here, we refers to 
machines. Machines are greater than people and the kings because they run continuously 24 hours and they can uh, they can produce much uh, they can fulfill but much tasks than people and kings. So it is referred to uh, in this form. Uh, we are greater than people uh, people and kings. We will serve you 24 and 20 hours a day. Here it is very well, it is very clearly explained. We will serve you 4 and 20 hours a day. That means it can serve 24 hours a day, hours a day without rest. So uh, when human beings work, we have uh, we have a limited span, uh, so we take rest. But if, uh, when uh, machines are compared, they do not take rest. And once the fuel is, um, once they give energy to these machines, they work 20, 24 hours a day without rest. That is called as hyper. That is an example for hyper. One of the first example is uh, here is the smell of bread still. All perfumes of Arabia will not see it in this little hand. Next we are going to see about imagery. Here, imagery means it is a description. Uh, it is a description to, uh, to create a picture in the reader's reader's mind. It is a description to create to create a picture in the reader's mind. Not only visual. Visual means uh, what is visible. We uh, before wise. Not only this is a visual, but also uh, can create five senses: sight, hearing. Touch, taste, and smell. It can uh, uh, the five senses are included here. Sight, sight means visual, hearing, that is audio, uh, uh, audio sound. Uh, hearing, touch, we see, uh, we get some sensation. Taste and smell. These are the five senses. Uh, senses, but uh, when you come to the example, blue sky, yellow pebbles. Bitter taste, blue sky, yellow pebbles, bitter taste, uh, bitter taste. These are some examples for imagery. First, we are seeing uh, uh, the, the here once again. Imagery means it is a description to create a picture in the reader's mind, not only visual but also can create five senses: sight, hearing, 
टच टेस्ट एंड स्मेल हियर साइट इज विजुअल ऑडियो टच टेस्ट एंड स्मेल दीज आर आर दीज दीज आर द एग्जांपल्स वंस अगेन ब्लू स्काई येलो कलर्स एंड बिटर टेस्ट and let us recall one uh, once again the uh, from the beginning what do you mean by simile simile means it's a comparison between two different things uh, which has some common similarity that means it is in another term you can say it is it is a comparison made using the as of like when you come to metaphor it is a comparison made uh, use uh, is a comparison made uh, without using as of like uh, simile means comparison made using as a like here imagine whatever means is a comparison made without using as a like the next we saw personification personification means giving uh, personification means we give life to the non living things give life to the non living things that is called as personification next one is of monomorphia monomorphia means it is a imitation of natural sound the next one uh, hyperbole It is an exaggeration of our state. In order to stress us, uh, we use uh, exaggerated statement. That is called as hyperbole. Next one is imagery. Imagery means description to create a picture in the reader's mind, not only visual but also can create five senses. These are the uh, these are the 